Saruman has poisoned the mind of the king and claimed lordship over these lands. Oh, he also, he did that, yes. Interesting that he's so perceptive that he understands exactly what's happened. He's a, he's a smart guy, okay? Maybe he watched the movies. Well, he, I think he's got all the info, right? Saruman's hand and Grima yep. went wrong and... Well, I... <sighs> I'm, I'm kind of um, a king being under yeah, some sort of enchantment. You kind of have to surmise based on what the movie shows you, but like uh, in the books, he's not necessarily uh, aware that Saruman is controlling Wormtongue, who's then controlling. Well, I'll say uh, this much. It, yeah, he it's, finds it's, out. It's better that he doesn't know because there's a question of why the fuck would he be abandoning the king if he knows that he's being puppeted. The Uruks are destroyed. We slaughtered them during the night. Did you see two hobbits with them? We left none alive. Yeah, because like the logical choice the would be ability? like, well, I should really got... just kill Wormtongue right now. Yeah, like, if you've got the armies of Rohan uh, threatening them, then sure, but like, it, it, I remember being brought up as a question of just like, should Aomir be sort of riding off? Well, uh, consider he is going around killing orcs everywhere. So if the people are protecting the king in Edoras and he's running around killing orcs outside, then they're both kind of helping to protect the kingdom in their own way. You'd so. think a primary objective yeah. though, would be to uh, save the king if he knows. Yeah, maybe. Like, the, the real maybe threat to would... the king isn't the orcs right now, it's, it's Wormtongue. Look for your friends. But do not trust to hope. Maybe in his mind he's thinking that might start like... A, a huge internal conflict. Well, they did try to give us, you know, he was fighting and stuff. essentially betrayed and taken away, but I mean, there's a lot of them. You'd, you'd think maybe that some effort would be made, because he goes pretty far away to the point where uh, he's almost not back in time, you know? I mean, they gave him horses, so that's something He did, little horses. Folk used to say there was something in the water that made the trees grow tall. Oh, that's, that's water. And come alive. Oh, shit. That's different. The Ents are referenced in the books, like, right at the beginning. And it is, like, the dream of uh, Pippin to see them. I'm just going for Merry and Pippin get to a point of being like, we want to be on adventures. Don't just listen to tree stories. Is it much further? Don't be hasty. One trick is to tell them stories that don't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, it certainly has that vibe of just, like, let me tell well, you another story. Story about I had an onion tied to my belt. So I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Which was the style <laughs> at the time. <laughs> like the important thing was that I had an onion on my belt, which was the style at the time. I told Gandalf I would keep you safe, and safe is where I'll keep you. I didn't have white onions. Because of the war. It's not that the story is so boring. It's just that they've been through a lot. Yeah, you know, fellowship day. was tough. Sad on will suffer no rival. Well, it's crazy because <laughs> start... we're the both of the bad dup, right? Like, yeah. From the summit of Baradur, his eye watches ceaselessly. Mary fucking yeah. stabs the Witch King. I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty crazy, like, how involved <laughs> they become in the battles going forward. But he is not so mighty yet that he is above fear. Well, that's the thing. We start this movie, they're in the worst position out of everybody. The rumor has reached him. The heir of Numenor still lives. I mean, they, they have, like, the least assurances out of everybody that anything is going well at all. They're almost eaten and trampled by a horse. Yeah. And, they don't yeah. know who's coming out, if anyone's coming to get them, or... Because they, they've got to be hopeful that Frodo managed to escape. He fears what you may become. Then so he will strike hard and fast at the world of men. Trust now in Frodo. Everything depends upon speed and the secrecy of his quest. It's a pretty, I'm like, alone. swift way of essentially acknowledging that that's something that would definitely be on his mind, but also, like, moving us into a position of that's now happening, which means that we've got these new tasks that we need to set about doing. Yeah, there's things we need to do. Do not regret your decision to leave him. It's not just about the ring. There's a lot of plot lines happening here. Exactly. Like, yeah. Yep. I went with him. Did he? Which is one of the things that really helps Middle-earth feel like a big place. Sure, we've got the Fellowship, you know, they've got their quest to destroy the ring, but while that's happening, there's a world where events are still taking place. The Orokai is sweeping across the lands, so there's still people that need helping. Theoden, son of Tenga! Too long have you sat in the shadows. And I think you get the impression as this scene goes on that a lot of the people there are kind of like, actually, let's just see what happens. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I would stay still if I were you. You see it when it's holding him back, like, no, don't, don't intervene. Let's, uh, maybe let this play out. <laughs> you have no power here. This Gandalf guy, he's pretty chill, right? <laughs> he's a cool dude. I fucking love the way they have, um, Saruman mixing in with this. 
Yep. Man, I so appreciate, like, how much time we spend actually, like, seeing the civilians, you know, seeing all of the innocents. I feel like it's something that's been really absent, particularly talking about superhero films, of not sort of establishing what exactly it is that you're fighting for. Because even, you know, there's, like, specific civilians who we get to sort of see every, like, that family that got split apart at the beginning. But it's even just seeing them moving around and clearly pretty unhappy to just remind Yeah, it's just, like, like yeah, reminding us, here, this is trouble. what we're doing it for. You know, this exactly. is... Who the, this is who we're trying to defend. I mean, obviously the stakes are, like, quite grand here, um, but at the same time, you compare it to, you know, you compare it to something like fucking Endgame. It's, it's really, really, really low stakes by comparison, but it feels enormous. Yeah, or Loki or something like that. All of reality isn't at risk yeah, of exploding. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All of the universe, all of the reality, that. all of the multiverses compared to all of the people that have been gathered here at Helm's Deep. It's just important to keep seeing them so that it just keeps reminding you what exactly it is that they're fighting for. I do love the escalation throughout the Lord of the Rings trilogy. You know, it starts off with Fellowship where you've got, it's kind of just small scale battles yes, it towards is. the end. Yeah. Where it's just very much like um, each member of the Fellowship trying to survive that Urukai attack. Then you've got this where you're facing an army of 10,000 and then you've got the siege of Minas Tirith, where there's like a hundred thousand orcs that you're up against. I mean, it's just... Which, that kind of follows, I think, intuitively of like, oh yeah, the longer it goes on, the grander it gets. But really, it, it kind of like highlights like a desire to make sure that we have a good understanding of the Fellowship, this core team of characters. And then once we've got that, then we can start expanding the scope of, well, now we understand who they are. Let's introduce them to new important players in the world. And, and like, it doesn't get too confusing. With this, right, because they're in range of your archers, like, wouldn't you want to just be firing immediately like as soon as they're in range just like open fire on them kill as many as you possibly can or maybe this yes. guy just had a really 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 it might strong be the, arm it might be the just out of a reasonable yep. range i Great don't know shot. you can see he might have wanted them to be a little bit closer to guarantee shots or something the music fuck it let's go yeah come on guys fuck them up yeah because they're still waiting for a better range specifically yeah i guess to get between the armor all the the bow strings and everything making all the water kind of spritz around fucking gimli he just wants to kill something ah! so Sorry. cool yeah. You know, he says, like, give them a volley. It's like, no, just open fire. Go, 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 yeah, go, go. Keep, keep going as long as you can till you run out of arrows. Send them to me! Come on! Send them this to me. So fucking good. Oh, I love the music here. Yep. I mean, th th this is not mince words. Helm's Deep is known as one of the greatest battles in all of movies. Yep. Oh. I mean, it, it, it is. It is. It might be the greatest. And I I, I, I think it's because better. it's on a scale that you can understand. It's like very when you get to the, yeah. the, the led the level of like the siege God. of Gondor and stuff, like it's so big you almost can't wrap your head around it. But yeah, like this is like very much you yeah, can follow it. The berserk is Look at that. Some God like my teeth there. And you know, first big battle in the trilogy. Big one. Yeah. And oh and it's such a after... promise of what this has to offer. Oh. Yeah, after you're done, like, like, how are they gonna outdo the next ones? There it there is. There it is. The next oh my god. Oh, that money. Ah. It transcends cultures and Locked races. This guy's leg off here. Just lopped it off. Ow, uh, my leg. Oh, look at that. That guy's just a fucking beast. Getting more of that desperate sense now. Yeah. Yep. Because, I mean, you know, you're putting up a good fight, but it's a battle of attrition. Well, yep. Yeah, it's like the, when they when they outnumber you 100 to 1, you're not going to win that Yeah, one. the wall was their advantage, but they've kind of lost it at this point. Aragorn! Fall back to the king! Get your men out of there! I love how like, Gimli's like, ah, fuck it, let me at them! Oh, no. <laughs> With the music being off, you're like, wait a minute. But do it a serious uh, thing. When you're probably like a thousand years old, like yeah. death is just so, like, so much more significant because you've never experienced Elder. it. He's in Spartacus. Damn good show. Oh. Oof. He just oh, got, oh, he got stabbed, oh. stabbed by the battering that, ram. Ow. His head hit the yeah. fucking. Right out. Wait a minute, I remember something. 
The sun is rising. Oh, they set this up. Day. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. You're right. IHOP is opening. <laughs> Poor Gimli uh, hitting the horn because he has no idea what happened. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, did we win? He thinks the horn caused it. He thinks the horn caused yeah. the handoff to arrive. And he's like, whoa. The tale he tells around. his children, I won it by blowing the horn. It scared all the uruk away. <gasps> Gollum just wants the ring back. He didn't agree to all this. That's its name. I mean, this is interesting, that right? The name? fact that it says no, no, and then yes. Like, even yes. Faraby has picked up pretty quickly. You can't trust this fucking goblin.